So, high back 1973 Volkswagen square back seat. My job today is going to be basically chopping off this top part right here, turning it into a low back seat. I already did it, um, and it worked, but what I didn't account for is this guy right here is the thing that makes the back of the seat, you know, go forward so that people can get in and out of the back. Um, I didn't account for that, and I assumed that what I would, you know, I would eventually be able to just like cut into the fabric that I bought and be able to just put the lever on there and it would just work. It looks awful. If you check my old tie rod video, um, I go over it in the end there, it looks terrible. Uh, and now I have to get a different seat cover. I have to get another one ordered custom from SoFine, and that sucks. That's an expensive mistake. But before I put that order in for SoFine, I wanted to do this seat and hope I don't screw anything up again. Um, yeah. So, the hard part about this is going to be this mechanism here for the, the seat recline. Uh, I'm, what I'm going to try and do is do an internal method and basically weld a pulley in here and have like some braided line and have the braided line come out somewhere around here with a loop on it and you just basically pull down on that and that's what causes the seat to go forward. Hopefully that's what will work, which will allow me not to have to cut into any fabric. Um, and yeah, it's one less thing for me to worry about. If I get that done right, then I have to do it on the other seat, which isn't a big deal. But first things first with this seat. Um, what stinks about the 1973s is this, is that it is a two, three, uh, three sliders. Um, every other Volkswagen seat going from, I think, 72 and earlier is two sliders. It's just these two guys. It's just it doesn't have this middle part right here. So mine does, and what that limits me to is not having the ability to buy um, like 68 to like 70 high back seats. I have to buy these, or I have, you know, I, I, you can swap the seat backs for those. Um, or even if you can't, chopping off the top of this on those high back seats is pretty easy because it's just literally like there's a bar that does this and you just chop off the part that goes up and just weld the pipe. Well the pipe in the middle <clears throat> to take that up and then just buy a low back seat cover or a low back seat cover and a low back uh, you know cushion and you're good. Mine, you'll see, it doesn't work that way. Um, but using a low back cushion is going to like basically make it perfectly fine. Um, but yeah, I'm stuck with this seat because of the three rail system, uh, so I have to do what I have to do. You know, it's not easy, but if, every, if it was easy, everyone would do it right. So, first things first, I'm going to disassemble this seat. All right. In order to get these things, well, first of all, I did a step that you didn't see. There's a black cover that kind of hides all this um, mechanism that is just two screws that attach here, and uh, there's another spot it attaches, I think, somewhere around here. Um, and it's just a cover, and you just take that off with two screws, and that exposes all that. So that's the first step. Second step is this. Um, you don't have to take off this nut right here basically all you need to do is take off this spring and this big ass allen and you'll be able to separate the <clears throat> actually maybe you do have to take this off we'll see but yeah basically all we're trying to do here is get the seat back off so first thing I'm gonna do is just crack this oh it's already cracked maybe I was here Maybe I was doing this before. Let's see the other side. Nope, I wasn't here. Right, here. Lock it down. Alright, that's 
moving. All right, now let's get that spring off. There's a boatload of tension on this thing, so I just use the old vice grips to pull it off. guys moving around nice and loose no tension on these all right let's take the seat back off hooked up to this somehow. I should know that if I'm making a video about these things, right? I should. Alright, I'll think about that later. Get this off. Ugh. Now we need to take the rest of this mechanism off. And there is a... Well, this is just safety tied. There should be a, a, a circlet there. Sorry, should be a circlet there. Um, but yeah, take that off. Basically, yeah, there's a little spring there. So now there's no tension on this anymore. We have to take this off so that we can take the cover off. So that's still, I have to figure that one out. But take that off, take this off. It should be ready to go. As with everything on this car, ah shit, I should have done this before when it was all put, hooked up, or maybe just do that, yeah, there you go, like everything on this car, it's a 13 mil. Oh yeah, this is like, okay, alright, I know, I know what I'm doing on this side then. What's going on here? I did this before. seat back mechanism. Now I just have to deal with that. But on the underside of your seat. This one has remnants. This is the remnants of um, seatbelt warning light. What this the whole little contraption is, but someone just safety tied it right there because I guess they couldn't find <clears throat> They couldn't find the, uh, there's, there's a sensor here that's like a long white strip with a couple wires coming off it that lays right there. Um, and basically if someone's sitting on it, like if it notices, like, you know, if it notices pressure, um, it sends a signal to the brake light or the, or the warning switch for the, um, for the seat belts and, you know, flashes a light on the center console. 
this one obviously like this is the the pigtail that's supposed to go to um, two connectors that go to the uh, seatbelt uh, female ends but it doesn't have the sensors so I guess they whoever had this before me just decided that this was good to keep anyways but yeah this is going in the garbage because I can't find those that I asked for them I can't find those sensors for the life of me so that's the one thing on this car that I'm just not going to be able to um, to keep or to keep stock that was like a feature on it there's no way I can't find them um, that that is what it is so anyways um, at this point I need to take this part off right here I'll do that off camera but I think what I want to do now is start turning my attention to the <clears throat> to the seat back because that's really where all of the issues are going to stem from. Alright, next step is to start prying these rings up. Um, I got a few of them already. Some of these are either really, really in there or just really old and it's hard to get a good grip on them. But either using this, these hog ring uh, pliers, this is not the ultimate tool for the job, but it's sometimes it works. I'm just working with a screwdriver and just trying to get it to come up a little bit. Ugh, it's annoying. Well, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. All right, we got it. That's a real pain in the ass, but I think now we can slide this off after we take this off, which is just a pull. There. Now I can take this off. Should I pull it from this thing, maybe? It's more than one way to skin this cat. It's to a certain point, it should just go. Yeah, there you go. You got it. Hello different on this one. Alright, that's a cover off. It looks like someone was in here before. But that doesn't really matter to us because this padding, all this stuff is coming off. We're going to be using um, the low back padding. So this can all go. And if you want to be nice, we can sell that to somebody, but I'm not. I just want this shit going. So there's probably ties around the back here, keeping this all together. Yeah. Keeping the burlap on here. Oh, do I need to get my freaking cutters? I think I do. I think I do. But anyways, what we can do is we can look at this. This whole thing, right? Oh, you can't see it. This. So this is what makes the seat recline. Now you can see that there's cable coming from here down here and links up to the bottom of here. And this latch right there, if you can see it in there, is actually what 
releases the rear seat. So, I need to do, I'm gonna have to think about this, because what I was thinking was just connecting something to this lever here and just making it so it pulls up which would pull everything else up which would still work I, st I wouldn't mess with this thing at all because this still needs to be doing its thing but uh, the only change would be just adding something here that would allow me like eventually this is going to be cut and there's going to be a straight bar from like here to here and when I do that, like, I'll have something across here to weld the pulley to. And what I'm thinking is I just need to find a way to attach a cable to this arm, which would lead to this pulley that would be, I guess, like, maybe here. Um, and then just have it loop, the cable loop all the way down, sort of follow this, this routing here. And then just you know, do something to keep it all in place, like maybe like weld a little loop, like a, a stay or something like that, so that this can do what it needs to do under here, and that's the, that's the hard part, that's what I have to figure out, and that's why we're all here, so, anyways, I'm going to get this burlap off, um, the next step is then to cut the top off this seat, weld on the pipe, and then we'll figure the rest of that stuff out. Alright, we're uncovered. So, basically where we're going to cut for this is using your eye, like, basically this would be, if you're thinking like an extension, like this is where the low back would be, this is where the high back, this is where the backrest, or the headrest actually starts. So basically I'm going to draw an invisible line from here and just cut straight from this point. And like basically everything above these two hooks is going away. So I'm gonna cut that off real quick. Alright. Top cut off. Bar right there. Fairly even and just welded in place. Uh, this does a few things. One it obviously adds rigidity to it because you just cut the top off it. Uh, and two it's gonna allow me to have something I can mount the, um, the pulley to, just at the bottom right here, once I figure out how I'm going to route all that, but now we weld. Okay, sloppily got this bar welded in place, and I realized that I am pretty much out of welding gas, so I can't expect anything to be all that pretty, but, you know, it's, it's tough, it's on there, it ain't moving. Uh, so, now the pulley mechanism. So, what I found out actually is, so what I have here is a accelerator pedal from a Beetle, and it has the, it has, um, I can't really show it because it's hooked up now, but it's basically like this bar, and then there's, you know, it's flat, and then there's a hole in the end, uh, that you're supposed to fit that Z bar sort of thing in. Uh, like all these hooks are the Z bars. Um, so I was thinking, like, how do I get this on the on the lever? And the outside one, maybe you could see in from there. Yeah, you can sort of see what's going on in there. Um, this outside Z bar, I just fit this over it on the other side. So now this Z bar is holding this in place. And now I have the first step done. I got the I got the pull up, the upward part. So now I need to figure out the pulley. And this is what I got. I got this little 15 pound uh, hanging pulley from Amazon, which is going to be more than enough for me to kind of stick it right there and have it looped. And you know, it should work if I have it like more towards this part right here, and so it's more straight up and down, I can, but, now I'm thinking, how do I mount this to that, and the one thing I thought is, like, well, just fucking weld it on there, but, 
you know, now that I'm out of weld gas, and I'm not that, you know, well, like, I could weld it better if I had weld gas, but now that I'm out, I want to do something slightly different, and I think this is the best way to go. So, in the back of this pulley, there's a little uh, Phillips head screw that holds this uh, pivot on there. And I want to cut that off, and what I'm thinking is, is I get a, a bolt and thread it through there and kind of use it as a carriage bolt so that, like, I wedge it in there so that it doesn't, like... This is, yeah, I don't really know how I'm going to do this, but what I want to do is I want to be able to just drill a hole through the top of this and the bottom of this, bolt this to it with, like, using, like, a nylon nut or something like that, or, like, a stover nut or something like that, um, and just basically bolt it to this. So that's, that's what I would like to do, because I figure that's the strongest way to, uh, you know, to make this work outside of just welding it on there. I think that's the, the next best way of doing it. So now I just gotta figure out logistically how the hell I get a bolt that goes through there, sticks up there, so I can put a nut on it from in here and tighten it down without having this just, you know, without having that just spin. Because I don't want this to spin, I want it to stay, like, static. I want it to be just like that, so... I don't know. I have to think on that one a little bit, but like at least I know that I have this part squared away. So that's a small step towards solving this. Now I just gotta figure this out. Alright, I think I got this figured out. So a quick trip to the hardware store and cutting off the top of this pulley. I have a socket cap two inch bolt and it does fit in here all the way through like so that up nylon lock washer up top and it'll fit right through there I'll have some excess there and I'll just cut that off because um, I didn't know I knew this was an inch but I wanted to I'd rather be too long than too short but yeah basically that's how I'm going to do it do one of those. Um, it's gonna spin still, but whatever, it'll be fine. It's gonna spin a little bit, but once there's tension on it, it should come right back into place. But yeah, that's it. So now what I have to do is drill a hole on top of this and just yeah, thread it through and bolt it up, and it should be pretty much everything I need to do. I was thinking maybe put a tack once this is on here, but I'll, I'll see. I'll see if I want to do that if it, if it doesn't seem like it's um, strong enough with just the bolt through it, and I'll throw a, a tack on there. But I think this will be perfectly fine. Let me do that right now. All right, I have it loosely in place. I, haven't, I don't have it... Uh, obviously tightened up all the way, but I just kind of wanted to see my proof of concept here. So, down here, pulling, and there we go. It works. It definitely, definitely works. However, it looks like this guy kind of want to, kind of wants to come off. Yeah, this guy's and I got a weird angle. Oh, right, there we go. Now the angle's right. Let's see if yeah. Looks just fine. Cool. And this is squared away. Yeah. Cool. So yeah, now I just need to tighten that up. And because it's an Allen socket, I needed to buy a, like just one for this head, cut it halfway so that it could fit inside of here, and I could like hold it from in there and tighten it from up top. So let's uh, tighten it up a little bit, get it to I don't know maybe 
here-ish. Looks about right. Yeah, looks good. Cool. Uh, now, I guess what I have to do is figure out cable routing because I want this to be... Where do I want this to come out? I guess I want it to follow this guy. Which one's had it come in here and come out there, so... Maybe I'll just do it now. This is a very, very long piece of metal, or of, uh, what do you call it? It's a very long piece of braided line, but it works just as I wanted it to, just as intended. I could leave it like that, honestly, but, you know... Ugh. Sorry, I'm doing this off camera. It's easier for me to work this way. Yeah, man, it works. Nice. Man, I can't believe I actually figured that out. I'm smart, man. I'm way smarter than I give myself credit for. But now, okay, so that's routed and correct, and everybody's happy about that. Now, what I have to do is figure out... Like, how do I make this look at the bottom? Like, I want to have it, a, like, a loop or something like that so I can just, like, tug it instead of just, like, a, a wire. I don't know. I can figure that out later. It's not really that big a deal, but for now, I'm going to tighten this up, get this guy up to about, I don't know, here-ish, and just leave it. Uh, and then I can start actually reupholstering, and I'll show you how that works. All right, now with all that figured out, we can actually start putting it everything back together. So this is from Sofine, a low back seat pad, which I highly suggest if you're going to do this, you get this. Because this, just by the virtue of just having it, allows you to basically cover up all the sins and all the stuff that isn't quite right. Just by having this pad, gets you in the ballpark. And that's really all you could ever ask for. So that's basically it, like that. Slip the cover on it, and that pretty much does it. Hmm. Uh, by the way, this was all made for me by So Fine, S E W Fine. Texas. Excellent, excellent company. Really, really nice guys on the floor. Just gotta get it started. Once it's started, you're pretty much home free. Let's get it 
suppose if you wanted to make this easier, you could heat it, but I really don't think it's necessary. You're going to have some excess at the bottom there, but that's okay. We can just kind of tuck it in. But, uh, that's pretty much it for the seat bags. Actually, um, using the hooks to basically cinch everything up, like the when you know those things I was trying to bend out, um, it'll draw this in and will give basically the seat its shape. And yeah, that's pretty much it. It's pretty good, and this still works. Sure before I yeah. it works. Cool. Alright, now I just need to get to the bottom of it. And oh, get it all rolled up. And how does this work? It does this side first and then this side rolls off. Underneath it, then I'll just cut the excess. Gotta give it a good oomph. There we go. All right. Uh, first things first. Here. Let's get this all tucked. So we tuck the back first. Do I want to tuck the back first? I'll cut the excess off this if I need to. Such padding. This guy over here, so I don't hope you can see. So, what we're doing is we are getting this guy on the hooks first. Just doing a gentle pull here. bit of a jerk. There we go. Okay. So that's that. This is bunched up a little, but I really don't care. Let's see what to do here. Yeah. So I gotta cut off about this bottom inch of fabric here. I guess I can.
This is all going to be tucked underneath. You'll never see it. Alright, grab these hog ring pliers. Make it a little bit easier for me to stretch. Just like that. And that'll bring up a lot of slack. And just let me... Before I go any further... I really wish I had my hammer right now. I don't. Yeah, I just want that gently held in place for the moment. Alright. Come on, get in there. Think. Think that went. Good enough. So this one right here. Come on, bud. Pierce. Pierce, damn it. I just wanted to pierce through this fabric. And then I'm basically... through. Come on now. Come on, man. There we go. All right. There. I'm definitely going to get a hammer to you later. All right, keep going. Can you even see this? All right. Back to business. Green pliers, grab, stretch. There we go. Some more real estate on there. Bend you over. Good enough to hold it for now. And this one I'm going to have to straighten out a little bit. I think I got it through now. Okay. So that's pretty much it. And 
that still works. And it's all tightened up. And as you can see, it's dirty. <laughs> I'll take care of it. But look, see it's kind of brought in now. And it's now got its shape. It looks pretty good. Let's do the bottom. What's up, bro? Yo. Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Show up, show up. Alright. Seat bottom. Oh, let's get this off. Same sort of thing. There's these little hooks. Oh, there, there, over there, 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 and then a bunch right down there. But do I have my knife anywhere? Because I would like to cut these. So I'll make it easier. And cut this off. What the fuck that is. Or I just do that, and it comes off. That also works. Okay, where do I start? Where to start? Let's start up here. Can we get a wrench on here? No. Go. Keep all my parts in place. Yeah, there is one. Two. And now I have to take care of that. I wonder if I can just like use my key. A, or a snipping tool or some shit. Let me go get that. Okay, they're cut. There's that one. All these down here. Come on now. Is this guy. Bend it back. We good. Little one right there. It should just come right off. Placement um, bit of what do you call it? Uh, seat padding for this one. I'm just going to use what I got. Uh, and I think, unfortunately, because when I did it in the other seat, it took me a long time because I think that the bottom cover that I got is not, it's like a little small for this. So it takes a, a lot of heat and a lot of stretching to get it right. But eventually I got it right. Um, just takes a little bit more work than just pulling it over and tightening it up. So that's what that is. So let me grab the cover and we'll start doing that. All right. So yeah, like I was saying, I'm pretty sure this seat cover is slightly too small for this seat. I think I ordered a low back, just basically seat covers for low backs. 
And so I think this is a seat cover meant for a low back uh, seat bottom, which isn't big enough. But I still can make it work. It just takes a lot more finagling and a lot more work with the old heat gun. But it does work. I have done it before. Trust me. It does work. And the nice thing about having that, that black cover that goes down here is that you know, all your stretches and all your um, work that you did to make it, like, you know, work, um, is all going to be hidden. So, they'll never, no one will ever know. It'll just be our little secret. But yeah, see, this is just really, really tight on there. But it will go. God damn it, it will go. Maybe I need to have it. Yeah. Give it a little bit more room up here. basically it. Just gotta get it. Loosen it up a little bit more. You. Eventually this has to stretch over that. I'm pretty sure. That's looking good. So let me just gently heat this up a little bit. Nice and supple. Yeah, I'm going to be struggling with this for a while. So basically, what I have to do is I have to get these covers to fit over here so I can use the hooks. And these covers, basically, I just have to get this whole thing to around this part so I can use uh, the hooks to secure it in place. So it's going to take a lot of tugging, a lot of heat, but it will go. Trust me, it'll go. All right, seat's done. Obviously, you can stretch the ever-loving piss out of it to get it to work, but it does fit. I cut my holes out there. That all looks pretty good. And that's pretty much it. So now we just put the hardware back on, and the seat is ready to go back in the car. Not bad. All right. First thing to go back on, Wah. let's pivot. And I just need to remember how it goes. The one, there's one side that's square, and one side that isn't. Actually, I completely forget how it's supposed to go. So we're gonna try this way first. See if this is right. That doesn't seem right. Mm, maybe this side sticks out like that. Oh, I forget.
You know what? It could be either. I don't know. Um. Oh wait, this one goes in the actual seat itself, I believe. I believe. Or actually, what will tell me is this, right? Okay. Oh, come back. Thank you. Oh, come back. Obviously, this goes on here. So, this side, yep, there's a square, but yep, that's how it goes. Is this one. It's a square bit here. Right? Right. Yep. And that goes in the back of the seat. Yeah, that's how that goes. Where is my... Oh, there it is. Or do I do, or did I just do this opposite? No, I didn't. I'll do it like that. Oh, now it goes there. Yeah. There's a C clip that I don't think I have. So I'll just have to get that later. NBD, no big deal. What else do I need? So I'll do, these are the springs, these are where the springs go. Whoops, sorry. That's where the springs go, so I'll do that later once I get the, once I get the back bolted into place. I think that's how this goes. And then there's a little bit of finagling that goes with putting the seat back on there. So we'll see how that works. We'll just keep that off for now. It's not necessary at the moment. I think that goes through there. Let's just see if I can remind myself how I did this. Yeah, that goes through there. Yeah, that's how that works. And the seatbelt goes through there. Okay. This is like doing a freaking wrist pin on a piston. A lot of it is just trial and error. Eventually it goes. I think that's about right. So yeah, anyways, this arm, if you didn't see what I did, uh, this arm needs to go into arm needs to go into that bit right there. Where's my screwdriver? I can just get it to fit a little bit nicer in here. No, it doesn't do a damn thing. Let's try that. Okay. Why aren't you doing what I need you to do?
Come on, buddy. I think maybe I need to. What do I need to do? I don't know. Oh, there we go. That's one piece of the puzzle. I just need to get this lined up here. I think that is about what I need right there. Come on, baby. Just need a thread to catch. And then we're home free. Come on now. I think, I think oh, damn it, I thought I had it. Nope, not yet. Oh, we're so close. Oh, we're so close. Come on now. Nope. Come on, buddy. Look for me here. Like it feels like it's catching a thread, but I guess it isn't. Oh, I think I just had a breakthrough. Come on, buddy. Good enough for now. Let's do the other side. Ugh. This side. I guess we'll just have this come back here. Oh. Come on, buddy. So eventually I will trim this. I just don't need to trim it this moment. Okay, there we go. Come on. Get in there. All right, done. Kind of. There we go. And of course, with the other side already in, this side is much, much easier to get to line up. All right, got it. You can't see what I'm doing. Oops. This thing's stuck. This line is stuck in the pivot here. There we go. All right. Oops. Push that up. That should be where I need it to be. Right there. Come on. This is it. Okay. Yep. That's got that. Beautiful. All right. So, that's pretty much it as far as the mechanism goes. Hmm. Why is this stopping? It should go all the way. Should be working. It should go all the 
way. But it's not. Hmm. Hmm. I wonder. I wonder what's wrong. Something is up with the mechanism. This should just fall forward. Okay. Let me see if I can troubleshoot what's going on there. I really hope I don't have to take this all off again. All right. All right. Now I got it right. So, word to the wise. When you're putting this together... Uh, make sure that when you're inserting these arms into the mechanisms, like into these things, uh, the little hook that goes in and meets this, make sure that you have the, um, the this thing, whatever the hell you want to call it, the retractor, all the way down so that it has enough room for the hooks to come in and and grab, because that was my problem. But now with it all back together it works properly so there you have it so what I have to do the rest of it is really well you know what let me put the springs back on I could do that at least how do I do uh, this way I'm still not really sure how to, or like, how to make it so that's easier to, uh, to pull, or like to loop it. I'm still not exactly sure how I'm going uh, to accomplish that. Not that tight. That'll do. Put my foot on it. Like that. Oh, buddy. Yeah. That's one. Still more to assemble here. Whoa. That's way easier to do when you're actually sitting on it. Let's put this back on. And I kind of forget how it goes. I think it goes here. I think it looks. I think it does that. I think that's how it works. And then what it actually... I'm going to have to look that up. <laughs> I forget. Um... Uh, I forget how this all 
links up. I'll literally have to watch the beginning of my video again and see how it all works. But that's pretty much it. What else do I have to put together? I have this like safety wired. I would like to put an actual cert clip on it, but I can't find one that fits. But I think that's it. I don't think I have anything else to do, so yeah. Well, yeah, I have to put the the, the plastic thing back on, but that's stuck in my car, but I mean, check me out. It's a nice looking seat. And it all, it all works. It looks good. It's just a little dirty because I'm rolling it around a little bit, but Gotta figure out what to do with, with this wire, but let me show you how a little bit of the seat how it all works. So yeah, let's see if you can look at it. This little bit. I actually like that, and I think this is a 73 thing. I really like it. Um so basically it's it's like your intermediate sort of driving position. You want to be more straight up, be a little bit more further back, you know, it's up to you. For whatever reason you want to be like this, but yeah, I think it's mighty cool. And then of course, oh, that's it. go if you ever wanted to turn a 73 seat into a low back and still have everything work properly that's how you do it now I need to redo yeah it's dirty I know now I just need to uh, redo the seat back on the driver's side but that's pretty much it. That's a good looking seat. I do say so myself. Okay. Trigger I should finish this up. Seat's in here. Interior's looking good. A little dirty, but I'll clean that. And... There you go. I uh, need a swaging tool to make this little crimp here. Um, the swaging tool I got off Amazon for 15 bucks broke while I was trying to make this clamp, but hopefully it'll hold. Because I don't want to spend any more than that on a tool I'm going to use for, you know, one here and then one over there. Uh, but yeah, that's it. Swaging tool, nice and easy. Everything worked. Low back seats, square back. Looks pretty good.